Hello students, in this video we'll find the generating function for the Bessel functions. Let's recall that Jn of x is the sum, k goes from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the k, then we'll have a divided by k factorial, and then an n plus k factorial, then x over 2 to the 2k plus n. That's the nth Bessel function and the Bessel function. Okay. And so now I would like to find a recursion relationship. So our goal now, our goal, is to find the function f of x and t such that it's equal to this Laurent expansion over n going from negative infinity to positive infinity of jn of x t to the power n. So I'd like to find a function that has this property over here. This is the generating function for the Bessel functions. Generating function. For, J, for jn. The sequence of Bessel functions. n and z. Okay, excellent. And so now let's, let me write down a lemma, and we'll use the lemma to, to find out what, these, what this function is. So our lemma is the following. So our lemma is that jn plus 1 of x is equal to 2n over x jn of x minus jn minus 1 of x. Okay, so that's going to be our lemma that's going to help us find this function over here. So we'll come back to the proof of the lemma in a second. So now proof of generating function. So now, what can I say about f of x t? Well, I'm going to do one trick. I'm just going to shift everything over. n goes from negative infinity to infinity of jn plus 1 of x tn plus 1, right? Because if I just shift everything over n to, from n to n plus 1, that doesn't change anything because I have every single integer over here. So as n goes over the integers, so does n plus 1. So nothing changes there. But now I can use our recursion relationship. This is the sum n goes from negative infinity to infinity of what? Of a 2n over x jn, jn of x, and then minus jn minus 1, minus jn minus 1 of x, and then a t to the n plus 1. By using our recursion relationship, great. And so now what can I do? So now observe that what this thing will be is I can pull that x out over here. So let's do that. So I'm going to pull a 2x and then a t out. So this is going to be two sums over here. This is going to be a 2 and then pull out a t and then pull out an x like that from that first sum, and then I'll have the sum over z, over n and z, n goes from negative infinity to infinity, of n, jn of x, and then t to the power n, right? t to the power um, n, t to the power n, like that, okay? And now, what can I do? And then minus, I'll pull out one t, and then we'll I'll pull out two t's actually, and then what will we have? We're going to have a j n minus one t n minus one. That's just going to give me the function, the generating function itself, f of x t again. Okay, excellent. And so now we have to look at this term over here. I have to relate this to x somehow, right? And so what I can do is I can say I'm going to pull out actually an extra copy of. Let's see what can we do over here. I need to write this as a derivative over here. So if I put an n, if I pull out one more t over here from this and pull out a t over there, that's perfectly fine. We can do that. And so now what can I observe? I can say this is really 2t squared over x. And then now the sum, I'm going to write this n t n minus 1 is really what? And this n t n minus 1 is really the derivative with respect to n. So this and this together is really d by dt of t to the power n. So this is going to be a d by dt of what? Well, I can pull that out of the infinite sum. The sum n goes from negative infinity to infinity of just jn of x t to the power n, right? I write it like that. And then minus a t squared f of x t, like that. Good. And so now what's the observation we can make? So now, of course, that's just the derivative of the generating function. So this goes over here. This is really just equal to 2t squared over x. And then partial, partial t of the generating function 
minus t squared the generating function, minus t squared the generating function, f of x t, like that. And so now what that tells me is that tells me that 1 plus t squared, so in other words, this implies that 1 plus t squared, f of x and t, is equal to 2 t squared over x partial partial t of f of x t. And now I can rewrite this as partial partial t f of x t over f of x t, like that is equal to this expression, 1 minus t squared divided by this, right? So I'm going to divide by 1 minus t squared. This thing is multiplied by x over 2. This is going to be x over 2 t squared times 1 plus t squared, which is exactly equal to what? Which is exactly equal to just x, x over 2, x over 2, and then a um, 1 over t, 1 plus 1 over t squared, like that. Great, and so now I can just integrate both sides of the equation with respect to t. That says that f of x t is a constant which depends on x. Now that's a logarithmic derivative, right? So I have to do the log of the, um, it's going to be the exponential of this thing, right? So this, of course, is a logarithmic derivative. So I have to do the logarithmic uh, integral of this thing. So it's the logarithmic integral of this thing over here. So I'll just put it as log of x, actually. Just save one step to avoid any confusion, right? So this is going to be the natural, the log of x, right? When I integrate with respect to t. Integrate with respect to t over here, what are we going to get? We're going to get an x over 2, that's just a constant, and then a t, and then a minus 1 over t, okay? Plus a constant c, which depends on x, right? Plus c of x. And now exponentiate both sides, and if we exponentiate both sides, what can we conclude? We can conclude over here that f of x and t is just going to be some constant, which depends on x, new constant, times the exponential of x over 2, then a t minus 1 over t, like that. And of course, we can find that constant over here by doing, some, by doing some limiting arguments. We know, for example, that when we plug into this thing over here, I know that j0 of 0 is equal to 1, right? And so I know that c, so we can actually find that the c exactly has to be identically equal to 1, right? Because, of course, what does the c of x correspond to? Well, we can't plug in any particular values of t that will help us understand exactly what the c of x is equal to, but in particular, we could plug in the multiple examples and sort of interpolate the zeros of these Bessel functions to include that c of x has to equal 1, right? So by plugging in, by carefully selecting values of the, these Bessel functions, which we'll discuss in further videos, we can conclude that the generating function, the sum n goes from negative infinity to infinity of jn of x t to the power n is equal to e to the x over 2 t minus t to the negative 1, and we have our generating function uh, for the sequence of Bessel functions. Thank you very much.